This is a pretty new topic for me. Boutique 4K Blu-rays. Let's dig into it. Now, of course, I'm quite a collector when it comes to 4K, Steelbook, Blu-ray, sometimes DVD as well, depending on, you know, what kind of a set it is, or even VHS if I'm a madman, which is very rare, but it, it occasionally happens. But a new thing that I've kind of learnt about is Boutique 4Ks. Now, arguably, Boutique 4Ks already exist when it comes to, say, like, Titans of Cold, and even Film Arena, and whatever, when they have their 4K disc implanted into the steelbook and whatever, but this is not that kind of a boutique. This is more Blue Underground boutique. Now, Blue Underground, for those who may not know, is an American brand. At least I'm pretty goddamn sure it is, because it came from the US. Uh, and I ordered it from Zavi, <laughs> and it came from the bloody US. Um, they obviously give you a film, remaster it on 4K, Usually to a f exceptionally amazing degree, from what I've heard. I've only seen Dead and Buried, because it's the only one I have. Uh, but they have done stuff like Maniac, uh, and a bunch of other films that are zombie as well, which is most notable. Um, I have the, uh, I don't have their version of it, I have the Arrow Video version, unfortunately. But, there is quite a degree of these, and that's why they are in... A protector. You would think, why the hell would you put a 4K in a protector? That seems really dumb. Now, to be fair, I got this yesterday. Came in the mail in a really big box when it came with, and it was face down. So the lenticular, because it's a lenticular, I'll show you in a minute. Was on the very base of it, and then there was all these like airbags on top. Not exactly the best way to pack it, if I if I were to to, to be critical of it, because um, you're not even protecting the the product by that stage. You just it's 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 like a two millimeters of cardboard away from death. Nevertheless, it came in a really good neck, so I'm, I'm okay with it. It's okay. And I'd never seen Dead and Buried before, of course. It's one of those films, it's notorious for as a cult classic that you've heard of, you've never seen, usually, for that being the case. Uh, and you, you've always been interested in it. So, what the hell is it? I've put in a big-ass protector courtesy of uh, Steelbook Central. Um, unfortunately, oh, I just hit the mic. Fortunately, these protectors are very, can be very janky sometimes. It's just the bigger ones. The bigger they get, the harder they are to fold up in a way. It's uh, annoying. And this is dead and buried. So, of course, firstly, this is the version, the cover A variant. There are three different cover variants, uh, all 110 Australian dollars each. Um, which is a lot. Uh, I've never spent that much money on one singular 4K in a regular case before. So, uh, that's something quite exceptional. And of course, I was always, I was very adamant, like, that's that's a lot of money. I'll put in my pre-order, see what happens. I was thinking I was eventually going to cancel it until it shipped a month early, which is fine by me, because why not? So, you get a slip cover which does have a lenticular, so it looks like that, you know, where there's no face, and then there's a face popping, and then there's a face all, okay, there's a face small, and then a face big. So this is the main theatrical poster. It's a really nice cover. I've got some extra footage of it. Unfortunately for me, there's a small little uh, nix on it, which you can kind of see, just a little scratches on the in on the middle, unfortunately. I'd say that's because of how it was placed when it was face down. But of course, it comes with the slipcover variant, which I believe the slipcover is what's the rarity, hence why I put in the protector. This is one of 3,000 units. Uh, and to be fair, it's a really solid slipcover. Um, I'm not huge on slipcovers. I mean, I don't mind them, of course. It's always fun to have an extra bonus thing when it comes to the slip artwork and whatever, especially if the artwork is something more different. Um, in my case, it isn't. <laughs> I think that's why other people got the uh, different slip covers because there was one of from one of the openings from the opening scene where there's a guy trapped in the net and he's on fire and I'm like, but I didn't also know that it was lenticular because they didn't show that on the Zavi website. Uh, I only know, knew that they were lenticular before it came in because I watched uh, films at home. He got that version that I just mentioned, and it had a lenticular that was. I'm pretty sure it went this way that like left to right rather than up and down. So this is one of my first ever up and down. Uh, lenticulars. I really dig it. So, uh, given how I really like the theatrical poster, I really like the look of this. Um, 
of course, nothing escapes damage when it comes to uh, lenticulars, which is the unfortunate nature of it. But it looks really nice. Uh, and of course it has a hell of a lot of special features, so on the back it does come with a 4K, a Blu-ray, and a CD, so a compact disc, uh, with the soundtrack. It's a, this, is, this in particular is a 1981 film, it's a 94 minutes. It does have Dolby Atmos and uh, 5.1 DTS. I went with the Dolby Atmos last night, it was a bit quiet watching the 5.1, and I'm like, sometimes despite the fact that I've only got a 5.1 system and I don't have a Dolby Atmos system, like my system does use Dolby Atmos, uh, but I don't have the speakers in the ceiling, but sometimes it just gives you a little extra, like, sure, you're not going to miss much from the stuff that's above, because it's really just stuff that goes, vroom, you know, from the back to the front, that kind of deal, or gives you some extra atmosphere and whatever, like, I can imagine something like Blade Runner 2049 would have an exceptional Dolby Atmos track, where it would, you'd hear everything. That I can understand would work, especially for that. A film like this does have a nice, like, uh, background. So in terms of its Atmos track, it does have some good front and some good back. It has some great sound effects around the back, especially when there are people creeping around. So it's, it's, it's got a good soundtrack to it uh, in terms of its audio. It is a widescreen presentation, full screen, all that jazz. It's all regions for the 4K, so, of course, if you're concerned about that, it's a 4K disc. They never have regions. I don't know if the Blu-ray is region A. From what I know, it probably is, but at the same time, I don't mind that. I've got an all-region player. My 4K player is actually all regions, so I spent a lot of money to get that. So, yeah. It does come with Dolby Vision HDR playback, so it requires a uh, Dolby Vision cap capable 4K Blu-ray uh, player and a Dolby Vision capable 4K TV. I don't know if my TV is 4K uh, is a uh, Dolby Vision compatible. I know it's HDR compatible, but my Blu-ray player is Dolby Vision compatible. I bought it specifically because it was it it, it came with the benefit of it has HDR and Dolby Vision. It doesn't have HDR 10. But it doesn't, it has a bit lesser on audio, so the audio is not as strong as my previous player, which the newer version of that did not come with Dolby Vision. So I was like, you know, take it or leave it. It's one of those things as well, you turn on the settings, it's like, I can have HDR on all the time, but then I've got to turn Dolby Vision on, and then turn it off again, uh, if I'm not watching something with Dolby Vision, so... I didn't notice any difference, so I don't know if my TV actually has Dolby Vision, but it still played, and it looked fantastic, so I can't delineate. I'm not as expertise when it comes to the differences between HDR, HDR10, and Dolby Vision. Hell, I don't even have an OLED TV or anything like that, so I can't, or QLED, I don't have any of that expensive jazz. I just have what I need for the time being. Like, eventually, sure, I'll get a much better TV, and all that crap, but I'm good for now. Like, it, it plays stuff to the ability that I want to see it in, that I'm okay to see it in. And in this case, this looked fantastic on it. So whether that's attributed to the mastering itself or the Dolby Vision, I could probably say it's both because it definitely was using Dolby Vision. So despite it doesn't say on the top Dolby Vision, but it, because Dolby Vision is still HDR. So it still said it was playing in HDR. So because it's just a HDR setting. Anyway. It does come with a bunch of extras, uh, including three audio commentaries, one of the director, one of the co-writer and co-producer, uh, and actress, and one with the director of photography. Uh, I did not listen to any of those. I only just watched the film for the first time last night, so I'm kind of uh, new to it. But in the time I had to watch it last night, I also checked out some bonus features. Uh, so there's also a new commentary track with film historians, a behind the scenes of Dead and Buried, which does tell you how long each one of these go for, which is quite nice. Uh, Dead and Buried locations, now and then. Murder, mystery and music interviews of director Gary Sherman and composer Joe Renizzi. Ren Renzetti, sorry, I don't even know how I said that wrong. Uh, new, the pages of, post of Potter's Bluff interview of novelization author. Uh, Stan Winston's Dead and Buried uh, effects. So I've watched apparently all the ones that aren't new. Wonderful. <laughs> so, I can't give you a good detail to look at. This is how good the special features are. From the ones I did see, which included the Stan Winston's Dead and Buried FX, 
I liked that one a lot. Uh, to the point of, I didn't even know so many of the characters in the film were puppets and animatronics, which was really cool to find out. Uh, I did watch as well the Robert Englund and early work in horror. I was going to watch Download Bound and Crafting Fear, but I had to, uh, a uni thing to do, so I was like, I need to do other things right now, I'll get back to it later. And to be fair, I don't always watch the special features on my Blu-rays, so I just figured sometimes when you're in the mood, you just kind of continue the track. Uh, it also comes with theatrical trailers, a posters and still galleries, and Stephen posters location stills, plus a dead and buried original soundtrack and collectible booklet with new essay. So, yeah, overall, it's quite a good mix. What do we get on the inside? I should at least show that off. So, of course, you get the same reversible cover. I don't think there's anything different about it. I don't know why there's a reversible. I don't mind. I like reversible art, but there's no real difference in it. Uh, you get the 4K disc, which does come with the regular uh, artwork on it. Um, it does come with a secondary disc, which is the Blu-ray one there. So, not a bad bundle so far. Uh, and it comes with, of course, the soundtrack. Um, I'll eventually load onto my computer. I have no uh, interest to... Okay, it does actually have a separate picture on the back. That's... Okay, so the back, the reversible sleeve comes without a, um, comes with a different image, and it comes without the barcode. I guess that's notable, as you can see there. See, there's a different image and no barcode. That's interesting, at least. So, I like when they at least add something different. And, of course, then you have, uh, your booklet. Um, it's a thin booklet, it's not too big, it does come with uh, chapter selections on the back. Uh, it's overly, overly spoilery, so um, I won't really show off what you can... I'll show off what you can get in it, but if you're, if you're trying to avoid spoilers, uh, you can just skim through to the next part. So you've got your cast and crew, uh, and you've got your essay, which I haven't read either, but goes more into old f films and classic horror, John Carpenter and stuff like that kind of what was big at the time, and how this varied from them. You know, the use of practical effects, for gore effects, and all that jazz. And I'm just getting most of that by looking at the posters, or like, and the images that they use. So, it definitely has a lot of detail about uh, what it is. Also, the soundtrack listing as well, at the very back. So, yeah. Overall, though, it's, um... It's a really nice set. I can understand why this... I can understand why it costs so good that much. It... Personally, for me, it uh, is annoying that it costs so much. I think it's probably more expensive for me because I'm in Australia. Uh, but that's just 110 flat from Zavi, which is a lot. And again, Australian dollars. So, of course, it'll vary between countries and whatever. And, of course, if you're in the US, uh, you can get this shit a lot earlier and from probably direct from Blue Underground. Uh, I can't get them direct. I don't know if I can get them direct from Blue Underground. I haven't really tried. Nevertheless, I'm very happy with this purchase. Uh, it's it's a new avenue for me to get into uh, boutique 4Ks that are strictly... Oh, it's just the... It's, it's like a Criterion Collection variant, but like, it comes with... Because it comes with the soundtrack and stuff, it's like... It's got something else to it. Like, you don't need the soundtrack for this film, but it's a pretty good score, actually. I, I really, Like, it's the one that you'd, you'd listen to it on the opening menu, and I really dug it, you know? But yeah, as, as an overall, I really like it. I'm interested to see if I can get my hands on any other Blue on the ground. They've got a few more on Zavi, but again, quite expensive. Uh, the most notable one I feel like I would love to get would be the Zombie in 4K, but I'm pretty sure that's uh, not just sold out, but exceptionally rare. <laughs> Uh, again, 3,000 units came out like a year ago, so I remember hearing about it over a year ago, so Blue Underground has been around for at least a year or two, um, at least from my knowledge, and I've I've always been hearing word about them, so they're definitely getting out there and into that market, and if their stuff is selling out, then that's good enough. It's like stuff with, again, these film premiums, like Film Arena and whatnot, like, if everyone buys them from the website and they sell out, then that's enough of a guarantee to keep going. Uh, 
Or at least if the majority sells out, then that's enough of a guarantee to keep going. There's, of course, the resale market, which makes it a lot more expensive, but a lot of these things are usually quite expensive to begin with. Like, uh, I think this Dead and Buried cost me more than my Mantelab order for... <laughs> Uh, for just one of the individual single Mantelab releases for Interstellar that I ordered a, a month ago. So I did order two of them in one go. Uh, so, of course, it was double the price. But in terms of that, it's like, to compare the pair, it's interesting. And I'm not wholeheartedly big on that, but at the same time, I'm like, well, to be fair, the only thing that makes a Mantelab and a film arena and all that expensive is the packaging. Because that's what you're getting. You're buying, you're buying the packaging. You're not getting ex extra bonus stuff. You're getting maybe a 4K disc. But you can get all that stuff normally. And that stuff is a normal stuff to acquire. So given that Blue Underground is like going that extra step of like, look, we're not giving you a premium, like a premium case. It's still like the kind of Criterion acrylic case. I don't know what the fuck those are called. Um, do I even have one to compare? Say... Say, say this, it's that kind of a thin case. You know, like, they give you that kind of a case, which I like, actually. They give you, it gives you more room for artwork and stuff, which I really dig. Um, but you get that, plus you get, you know, lenticular slipcover, which is quite cool. Uh, and there's three different variations per film, from what I've seen. Well, that might just be dead and buried, still. Then, of course, you get the soundtrack, which is really nice, and you do get a 4K and Blu-ray and a bunch of bonus features. So, and they put in the effort for that for that 4K disc. Like, it, it didn't shock me at first during the opening scene, but then, like, I think after the opening 10 minutes, when, because the opening 10 minutes is set outside at a beach, uh, you go inside, and suddenly it's like the blacks are exceptionally crisp. Like, the, 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 the depth and the coloration of it all really was just outstanding from like the 10 minute mark onwards and to be fair the first 10 minutes still looked really good it was just a very grainy footage which is fair enough like it wasn't low quality it was just grainy probably because it was filmed outside but then the rest of it just looked exceptional and especially during the nighttime scenes that shit was terrifying and so dark and i loved it it was really beautiful so yeah it's it's not Often that I get a 4K for an old film that can look so goddamn good. I do have some great ones, uh, some great old films that have some exceptional uh, 4K transfers. But yeah, as a, as an overall, I I mean I don't rank this stuff, but if if you're interested in getting a boutique 4K, I'd, I'd highly suggest Blue on the Ground. Just from this one release, it's like this is like a collectible thing. Like that's not something that I find to be very common. So it's for me, it's a very much an outlandish step. But it's like. But then again, I do the same thing for steelbooks, but then I don't get anything new in the steelbooks. They don't come with essays or a new disc or anything. That shit I can get normally. It's all retail stuff, just in exceptionally good packaging, at least according to the subjective viewer. Um, so yeah, and given I really love the poster, like, I don't care that I have the poster, the slipcover inside comes with, like, the slipcover has the poster lenticular. That's really cool. But then the inside is the poster, and then the disc has the poster ask, and then the booklet, it's, I understand that that could be uh, enough of an indication of, hey, maybe I should have bought the other version instead, me personally not knowing that it was a uh, lenticular, I don't know, you know, I don't know what I would have preferred, I, I'd like to look more into seeing what the different variations are, but it's like, the other variations could have had the same artwork underneath, rather than Sometimes the slipcover artwork matches the stuff, the artwork on the inside of the packaging. Sometimes it doesn't. So I would have preferred I got what I got versus getting something else that is the same film with a different slipcover, but then having that same artwork on the inside again. I would have been like, that's kind of annoying. But like, given that there are three different variants, I'd expect that. But then they all seem like I feel like they would all have that reversible sleeve on the inside that would have the theatrical poster, so I'm contemplative as to why my one has two different versions of the same theatrical, po like it's the same theatrical poster on the front of the slip, uh, of the sleeve, but then the back cover is different for both, so I'm like, maybe they could have gone with an op opportunity of like, hey, maybe we could have randomized it so the set the back half can be a different image, or whatever, so... 
I don't know, but most of those, again, the second and third variants are from particular scenes. Like, one's the guy burning, and one's the guy uh, the being, like, stabbed in the eye with a needle. Which, I, to be fair, would probably be a great lenticular cover. So, yeah, I don't... I'm not big on them just grabbing an image from a film and using that as, like, the big poster thing or the cover art. Like, I don't... I'm not a big fan of that. I don't mind it. Don't like, like, you know, like, if it's a boutique thing, then sure, that's, it's pretty cool. Like, it can be really nice, but personally, I'd like to have the theatrical poster or at least a good artwork for the front cover. So having the slip variant, having that difference, I can see, I can see that as making sense. So, yeah. Like, for example, um, this one, this is probably a, a good comparison piece. Uh, in Australia, we have a thing called Beyond Genres from Umbrella. They have the artwork on this slip cover, which is unique to itself, uh, and of course, even this this the side and everything, volume ten, on the back, it's just a regular kind of stuff. But then on the inside, you get this, you know, clear acrylic case. You get this artwork that goes, that's like different on both sides. This is like a theatrical poster, I think. This is like a recreated poster. You can even see it as like it says Simon Twenty One, so it has it's commissioned artwork open up you get the same artwork on the disc but then on the inside you get like a big landscape spread so something like that I could see as maybe something that should be similar to Blue Underground but I kind of like how Blue Underground doesn't do that and how like you know I can understand this slip being unique to itself within the artwork on the inside being just standard or like a redesigned artwork theatrical poster whatever but um yeah, that's just kind of my take on that. So obviously I've kind of borrowed more into slipcover variants, which I should have as a video on its own. But um, yeah, that's that's just what I think. I, I, but I really like this. I like this version. I really like the film as well. So I'm hoping to watch it again in a couple years because obviously I'd like to kind of have it going fresh again because I don't like rewatching a film like this too often in one year. I feel like it would ruin the mood of it. It's like, okay, yeah, it's this part where this thing happens, like, Maybe it's just because the film I didn't completely fall in love with it or whatever, but yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have any blue on the ground, which one would you suggest? Please, I would like some suggestions for if I ever buy any more. Um, but yeah, outside of that, thank you all so much for watching. Of course, you can check out somehow, find them online, good stuff, worth checking out. And I'll see you next time with other videos about stuff where things happen. Goodbye. Sweet Jesus.